Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight on a Bortnikoff fragrance. And this is a house that you guys know I absolutely used to love. I loved his work originally. Uh, I thought he was top tier artisanal house, right up there with the Rige La Dore, you know, Ensar, Agar Aura, whatever artisanal houses you love, put them up there at the top, Rising Phoenix, whatever it is. And I Bortnikoff was right there at the top. But in the last year or so, the releases that have come out, I've been less than enthusiastic about. If you want to see how much less enthusiastic, go watch my review of Scheherazade from last night. Extremely disappointing release. And this was sort of a continuation of three colognes that came out at the end of last year um, that I really did not like. I have a live stream on these three Bortnikoff colognes. Um, and I just did not think they were very well done at all. I did learn, interestingly enough, he has a son named Maxim Bortnikov, who, um, you know, I don't know if he had anything to do with these or or what, but I know that, uh, uh, you know, Dimitri has had some hurdles to sort of overcome, and uh, so I don't know if he had to sort of pass some of this work off to his son. I don't know if what it was with the house, but the last couple releases have been underwhelming. But I want to revisit some of the fragrances from the past that, uh, you know, made me fall in love with the house and the reason why, remind myself, what made this house so special. So today we're going back to 2020 and I still haven't reviewed, you know, done full reviews on the full bottles I have, but I'm still doing, you know, decants that I don't have in my collection because this could be my only chance to do a video on the fragrance. And this is called Moss Cologne. So special thank you to Scott from Germany. I believe Scott sent me this. Um, if not, whoever, whichever perfume god person th sent this to me, thank you. And I'm going to do a um, fresh spray because this is a fragrance that um, I've sprayed about four hours. I have a four hour dry down right here, but I just want to do a fresh spray for the video. Oh, the opening. Let me, okay. So, um, so let me just tell, tell you where this fragrance sits in the Bortnikoff cologne hierarchy, if you will, okay? So at the very top, in my mind, the number one cologne Bortnikoff has ever made, that I've smelled, I haven't smelled everything yet, but that I have smelled is this. Well, this won't show you what the hell it is, but let's open it up, shall we? It's this. And you can see this is a vintage bottle of amber cologne because it's got the wood cap. The new ones have the sort of standardized um, metal caps, if you will. They almost remind me of Roja's... Um, his, you know, uh, little bedazzled cap, but Bortnikoff is all gold and it says Bortnikoff on the side. I've shown him before on my channel. So this is an older bottle of um, Amber Cologne. And I think Amber Cologne is the absolute top. I'll review this one day. But for me, as far as like a Bortnikoff style cologne with unbelievable florals, unreal citruses and ambergris, the sparkle, the, the class, this is a, this is stepping out of a, you know, phantom. Uh, or stepping out of a ghost and walking right to your VIP seat in the in the restaurant. It is, and there's multiple types of ambergris in here, so it has a little bit of funk, but it's still just so perfect for the heat. It is class all the way. I love amber cologne. I think that is the tip top, and it utilizes all of Bortnikoff's strengths. You know that signature cardamom that he does so well that you see so through so many of his fragrances is there, and then all of the flowers, the jasmines, the all, you know, the woods, the ambergrises, the um, ouds, everything. It's all in amber cologne. I think that is the tip top uh, cologne. And then you've got these colognes and I would even throw Scheherazade in there with, with these three at the very bottom of the fresh, you know, fragrance pile. Moss cologne for me sits somewhere in the middle, okay? It's much better of a release than what ended up coming out at the end of 2022 with those colognes, but it's not as good as Amber Cologne for me. And like I said, one day I'll do a full review of Amber Cologne. Um, but Moss Cologne is solid, okay? And let me tell you sort of how it starts. And remember, this is a late night insight video. This is actually the first day I've worn. I've never smelled it before today. Like I said, I wore it four hours ago and I went to go run. Uh, maybe five hours ago now, because it's 1030. Um, and I went to go run. It's basically gone. Is the sad part about is the sad part about it. That's one of the reasons I reapplied. Uh, so um, and to be fair though, I did run at like 7:30 in Texas heat, so it was still the sun was still out. You know, I was sweating uh, heavily, and so the sweat may have sort of you know 
push some of this off, but you would expect with real ambergris that this would stick to the skin. Um, but it really did not last very long on me. That was that 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 is one downside. That's a negative of this fragrance that it does not last very long. It is an eau de parfum. So even though it says moss cologne, it is an eau de parfum. So you would expect it to last a little bit longer, but um, that is one downside. So the first thing you're going to notice with moss cologne is the moss, right? No, wrong. This is a Bortnikoff, remember. And um, what is Bortnikoff known for? He's known for his florals. I say that over and over again. To my nose, the very first thing I picked up on was the champaca. Absolutely the note that your nose will focus on the first time that you smell this. It's a beautiful champaca flower. And when um, Bortnikoff is on his game, that's what you notice a lot of times. Even in the big hitters like uh, Oud Monarch, when everyone's like, oh, it's a huge chocolate oud. And it is, but really that magnolia opening and the frangipani in the opening. And those are the, that's the first thing that catches your attention if you're actually paying attention. Well, not with your eyes, but with your nose, not instead of what people are saying, right? With Moss Cologne, it's not the moss that you get first. That comes later. What comes first is that champaca flower. And the champaca flower is brilliant. It's like a sunrise. And I describe champaca. Actually, if you watched my review of Bortnikoff's Lea Exquise, Leur Exquise, close enough, um, you know, you'll see that was a big champaca creation. And um, that also had a little bit of chocolate oud in there. But... Um, uh, Champaca flower is sort of this flower that if you can just imagine a color in your mind's eye, imagine like a golden hue, okay? Imagine that's the feeling, like a golden hue. Um, and so the way I described it in the Lyric Skis video is if you could just imagine a sunrise just about to, um, just about to break the horizon, but it hasn't yet, okay? The sun is still technically below the horizon, but you can sort of see this golden arch, it's golden hue, you know, that's the feeling of Champaka. And um, um, you're gonna get that instantly. That's the that's one of the first things, excuse me, um, that you will notice is, um, is you'll notice that Champaka flower. And, you know, there is a slight reminiscent to other flowers, but it's very powerful. So some say it has some lilac in it, some orange flower, some jasmine reminiscence, you know, but for me, it's almost like this honeyed, uh, you know, deep, heady, honeyed floral warmth, if you will. This, um, you know, caramelized sunrise, if that makes sense. And um, so after that, you're, after that, you're going to pick up the citruses and there are some beautiful citruses in there. But to my nose, Everything else just sort of plays its part. The champaca just stands out so brilliantly. There's a very slight hit of violet leaf, okay? The violet leaf adds a little bit of this ozonic aspect that adds even more to this sunrise feel. And um, once half an hour or so goes by, maybe even less than that, maybe 15 minutes or so, you'll start to get some of the spices. You do not get his signature cardamom, though. Here you get nutmeg. And... Um, the nutmeg is extremely realistic. It's beautiful. It's it's like, you know, grating a fresh nutmeg. Uh, and you're going to get some florals along with the champaca. So you're going to get jasmine, which I said sometimes champaca can remind some people of jasmine. And you're going to get ylang ylang. Okay, those are the three florals in here. And oak moss absolute. And the oak moss absolute is in the heart. And oak moss is in the base. And so it sort of turns into this texturized, vintage, old school feel. But with a beautiful citrus sort of sheeper construction, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know, imagine sort of a old school citrus sheepra. And I mean old school, like imagine like the stuff that was being made in the 50s and 60s for men, old school. But with that Bortnikoff twist, okay, with that Bortnikoff twist of champaca flower, beautiful citruses, and almost instantly from the top, even when you're smelling those citruses, and it's grapefruit, bergamot, orange, and lemon. So even when you're smelling these citruses, you're going to get this ambergris-like uh, feel to the fragrance. There's this sparkle to it. That's what I love so much about amber cologne. It's the sparkle. It's the it's the high class, um, you know, very elegant sparkle that I get from amber cologne. That just works in the heat. It just it's a brilliant hot weather fragrance. And Moss Cologne does that. It, it recreates that feeling for me, but it does it differently. Um, 
and I'm I'm so in love with Amber Cologne that I I just couldn't I couldn't put Moss Cologne above it. Some people might. Um, and if you're an old school Oak Moss fan, this very well may be like a Holy Grail Cologne style fragrance for you. But for me, Amber Cologne is still at the top of the mountain alone. Um, now, because of that Champaka flower, uh, one thing I should mention is that it, if I didn't say this already, I can't remember if I did or didn't, it is late here, but um, that Champaka flower, because it adds sort of this golden hue, some people may be remin thinking of things like fall, you know, when the leaves are changing colors and stuff like that, and so many people, I think, would probably associate this with a spring and summer fragrance. And, you know, for me, I have no problem wearing this in the dead of heat, mostly because I wear whatever I want, whenever I want. But this cologne is good enough for me to be somewhat seasonal specific. But some people may even say, I can't wear this in the 90, 100 degree heat. It has to be sort of, um, you know, it has to be uh, a little cooler than, than the hottest, the dog days of summer, right? And then in the base, there's some Atlas Cedar, Virginia Cedar, labdanum, tonka bean, and vanilla. So that's sort of the, the composition, if you will. So let me read you the little blurb, and um, and and we'll sort of wrap this up, because this is supposed to be a late night insight video. I gotta try to sort of shorten these a little bit. One other thing before I read you the blurb, I should mention this. It is out of stock on the website. So I believe that 50 mils would run you $350, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe 270. I think 270 for these colognes. I think the real the releases like Muscabib and stuff like that are 350. And I think these colognes um, are 270. And then these colognes, the ones I absolutely hate, the the cologne de pho and the one with like the the colored little thing in the front. One's red, one's purple, one's you know that kind of thing where the plate is actually colored. I think those are only 230, so they're even cheaper. Um, so, but this is not available on the website. So I don't know what that means. I know Bortnikov had issues with maybe sourcing ingredients. Or I don't know what was going on. Um, but some of his products were out of stock and then Parfumo said they were out, they were discontinued and then they came back in stock in the Bortnikov website. So uh, take it being out of stock with a grain of salt, but um, just, just something to consider. The other thing I must mention to be fair to everyone in the community is that this came from Scott, I believe, in Germany, and I don't know what year bottle this came from because originally, if you go to Parfumo and look up Moss Cologne, it shows it with the exact same wood cap that I have from a 2020 bottle. Uh, I think in 2021 or 2022, they changed it to, uh, the, to the metal cap, and I don't know about reformulation. I know there were some people that were just crying foul about reformulations from this house that, you know, the new Muscabib, which I have a, a vintage wood cap Muscabib as well, but some of them were saying the new Muscabib lasts half an hour and it's this, you know, sometimes air just has to get in the bottle, but I've heard a lot of that. So that's one thing I have to mention with this is um, I don't know what version I'm smelling here. And the fact that it is basically gone the spray that I just did four or five hours ago, it didn't even last four hours. Um, uh, you know, it, that, that worries me a little bit. I don't know what version I'm, I'm, I'm smelling here, but I can tell you that if yes, if this is the kind of thing you want to go for, if possible, try to hunt down a vintage, uh, wood cap potentially, if that's your thing, if looking for older bottles is your thing, like it's mine, then that's something to consider. Okay. Let me read you just a little blurb from Bortnikoff and we'll wrap this up. Moss Cologne is a fragrance which harnesses the timeless power and beauty of one of perfume's most loved accords and elevates it to a new level of elegance, sophistication, and complexity. Oak Moss has been used in many of the world's most legendary and acclaimed fragrances for countless decades. Here, it is surrounded by an orchestra of other quintessentially classic accords to create an olfactory symphony which will enrich enchant, excuse me, uh, vintage fragrance lovers and modern niche perfume aficionados alike. The opening notes are an effervescent citrus melange of bergamot, lemon, and sweet orange and grapefruit intertwined to enliven the senses. Man, I, who writes these damn things? Uh, just wait till you read the one. I read Frederick Mall's Heaven Can Wait blurb today. I almost threw up in my mouth. I really want to smell that fragrance, but the blurb almost was like, 
and it was almost like an anti-blurb. It put me off. Instead of making me want to smell it more, it, it almost like made me throw up in my mouth a little bit and I almost didn't want to smell it. The, the, the writing of that, of the blurb is so bad. Um, and, and if it's, if, if it's the same blurb for the whole, for the perfume everywhere, you'll know exactly what I mean when you get to the end of it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know who writes these things, but in the heart of the fragrance, Oak Moss Absolute is surrounded by the complex floral tones of violet leaf, jasmine, champaca, and ylang ylang. A spicy twist of nutmeg provides the perfect counterpoint. At the base of the perfume, bitter Oak Moss Resonoid sits along precious ambergris. So the ambergris, I think, is a big component of this scent to me. Um, with Moss Cologne, they only show ambergris with... The one that uh, that I love, the amber cologne, there's multiple types of ambergris. There's gray and brown ambergris, and I think that makes a difference. I know the brown ambergris is supposedly more animalic because it hasn't had as long of a time to sit in the ocean, uh, you know, to bob in the water, soak up the sunlight, soak up the salt from the ocean, and turn that, you know, white color. The brown ambergris is fresher out of the whale, and so it's usually more animalic. Um, and it says, um, sits alongside precious ambergris, cedarwood, labdanum, tonka bean, and vanilla provide a foundation which is rich, woody, and resinous with the perfect subtle dose of sweetness. The unusual use of oak moss and the selection of other highly prized natural ingredients make this a truly remarkable and unique creation. Those who yearn for the strident and bold fragrances of yesteryear which are now fondly remembered, will find much to enjoy. However, those who are inspired by the un, the untrammeled creativity of the modern artisanal perfumer will also find their senses in, enraptured by the scent. Moss Cologne is a tribute to the classical perfumes of the past, realized through the unfettered imagination of an innovative and forward-looking 21st century fragrance house. Wow! Uh, okay, so that is the olfactory description according to the House of Bortnikoff. Again, unavailable on the Bortnikoff website. Um, so I don't know what's going on with Moss Cologne, but I can tell you that uh, yesterday's video uh, was hard for me to make, honestly. It was hard for me to bash the House of Bortnikoff as much as I did, especially since just a couple days before the video yesterday, I purchased the new uh, Oud uh, balsam from Feel Oud, the, um, the collaboration between Bortnikov and Russian Adam. Uh, and so making the video of Scheherazade was very hard on me. Uh, and so I had to come back and I feel like I had to come back and, and make something that, uh, I was, I was really hoping I was going to like this and I do. It is good. Um, is it me going out and finding a full bottle? Good. No. But uh, it is good, and I'm glad I, I'm glad I get to do a positive video on the horse on the on the horse uh, on the house of Bortnikov. And so um, here's to here's to Bortnikov getting back on his feet and releasing perfumes like he was doing in 2018, 19, and 2020. So if you have experience with Moss Cologne, do let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave it in the comments. If you uh, let me know what you think of the house of Bortnikov, if you've had any experiences with the house lately. Um, you know, I love, I love doing these videos, even though these late night insight videos are sometimes just scratching the surface. Uh, I feel like, um, you don't always need, you know, sometimes just a little sample like this is enough for a proper reviewer to do a review on a fragrance. Sending full bottles to all these people is sometimes unnecessary. So, um, so, but yes, that's just my thoughts off of a initial wear. This is really like a first impression, if you will. But, uh, thanks for watching everybody. Cheers. Have a good night. Three videos today. So uh, appreciate everyone's support. Cheers. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.